welcome friends to this afternoon session of our monthly meetings you are all here because you want to have spiritual experiences i suppose that is the intention though some of the emails i get don't seem to suggest that some suggest that take away our money worries make us win the next lottery <laughs> find a nice guy for me or a girl for me improve my physical relationship with people most of the emails deal with these mundane problems but i believe that you who are here are here for spiritual growth and awareness and i believe that you have experienced this world this physical world and physical experience as not being your true home and not the kind of place where a beloved soul of the lord could be living that this was an experience which had too much suffering too much pain and it had some pleasures which were drowned in the too much pain and you are fed up of this if you are not one of these categories who are not fed up with this world and want to go to a better place or, or a truer place you need not be here but you are here for spiritual awareness there are two ways to spiritual awareness one is a mental way and is a long cut the other is a spiritual way and is a short cut the mental way is to study study hard read books understand what it is completely answer your questions of the mind get satisfied it is worth going ahead worth trying and then put in all your effort at meditation and work hard to go to the third eye center make lot of effort with practice to go to third eye center and then have experiences inside to get more conviction and faith that there is this path there is something else and then work further under guidance till you can have higher experiences work with a perfect living master who gives you the self and directions and tells you how to meditate and how to put in your efforts and eventually you will fall in love with that person perfect living master and after you reach the ultimate level of the mind which is called causal region trikuti the three worlds meet the physical astral and causal the three worlds are generated the experience of time and space is generated to pull you above that you will have fall in love with your master he'll pull you with his unconditional love beyond this is the long normal route there's a shortcut shortcut is surrender to the master let him take over everything including doing all this if you can surrender to the master a human being just like yourself no different but with your conviction that he is speaking from the true home he is not speaking like an ordinary person but he is speaking from his true home you surrender to the person and say you take over all the responsibility including the responsibility of going through this long route of doing meditation and going to third eye center stage by stage going to the trikuti the universal mind then being pulled out if you are a seeker of that and willing to surrender to that master takes on the entire responsibility shortest cut i can think of it's a shortcut to get the shortcut you have to arrive at a position where you can surrender it's very difficult the shortcut becomes very difficult more difficult than the other one because of the requirement of surrender in this one what does surrender mean surrender means you stop worrying somebody else has taken your worry very difficult people love to worry people worry all the time they worry sometimes they worry about why they are worrying and some worry why they are not worrying so worry seems to have become a habit and so long as you worry you have not surrendered if you don't worry and say master has taken whatever comes it's his design and that's the best for us then the shortcut works if you are suddenly pulled by the uncondition of his master and that itself is the conviction you have got you are the luckiest person because then you need, need not do anything that love will pull you and you will surrender automatically 
it come automatically to you so these are things which are not so clearly explained although they are all mentioned they are all mentioned in our scripture they are mentioned in the mystic books they are mentioned in meditational books but we don't read them in conjunction with our own experiences so we don't understand them we skip over them but if you feel i in one of my earlier meetings i read out a quotation from a holy book of the sikh religion guru granth sahib where it says nanak satgur bhetiye he is saying oh nanak he is the author he is telling himself nanak satgur bhetiye if you can surrender to a satguru which is a perfect living master nanak satgur bhetiye puri hoy that means your effort is complete satgur nanak satgur bhetiye puri hoy yukti yukti means your effort you can do effort the long way or you can do the effort of surrender your effort is complete at that point then what do you do second verse of the same quotation it says then while laughing while enjoying this world while eating drinking dancing go back to your true home nothing could be simpler than that then i read a quotation from the great master of this what is the real spiritual path he explains the real spiritual path the master to begin with the master in the middle the master master in the end master all the way why do you have to do something it is amazing to find a human being a friend of ours who becomes a true friend forever never gives up that friendship once he shakes hands with us to meet such a person and then to rely upon that person to do everything that you have to do and just go on watching what he is doing for you and you become almost like an observer of your life not a doer somebody else become the doer and you become an observer of your own life and you enjoy it because then when you become an observer of your own life life becomes a drama life becomes a theater and this whole world becomes a big stage on which you are performing a life theater live theater and life theater so this is something that i thought i should re- renew this message to you that do not always think that the only path is to the long path of struggling trying to find out where my third eye center is wasting hours and hours of useless meditation while the mind is running all over and we get so tired after it and we break our regular schedules of our meetings and so on for the sake of meditation there's a, there's another way and examine if life has given you that opportunity if love has given you that opportunity if the master has given you that opportunity of your experiencing an unconditional love if you have experienced follow the shortcut i'll like like to answer any questions if you have i'll take up a few questions and then after that i'll take the privilege of invoking the blessings of great master azur maharaj baba savan singh and distributing his prasad to you if one is blindfolded by a master does he need to meditate anyway almost a question i just answered <laughs> if one blindfolded by a master does he need to meditate anyone blindfolded he has experience of unconditional love and missing the master so badly so intensely which is a sign of great response to that love no meditation necessary if our pets give unconditional love what happens to them once their bodies leave their form if our pets give unconditional love what happens to them once their bodies leave their form they come back to you as human beings can there be more than one perfect living master who initiates souls on the correct path also what is the duty of hidden group gurus can there be more than one perfect living master who initiates souls on the correct path also what is the duty of hidden gupt gurus yes there can be many gurus there can be many perfect living masters masters appear in this on this planet wherever they are seekers masters appear of the order of seeking whichever is the extent of seeking of a disciple masters appear to them by coincidences 
if there are sufficient uh, seekers of the highest order asking for the true home, several parts of the uni universe of this planet, many masters will come and do, do their work of picking up those souls. So there is no limit in number of masters, but the number of seekers of true home is limited. Therefore, the masters are limited. As I said earlier, what kind of emails do I get? The emails are mundane subjects from here, which anybody with a psychic power can uh, respond to. You don't need masters for that. But those who are really interested in reaching their true home and do not even wish to reside in the realm of the mind, a perfect living master comes into, into their life automatically. And there can be many. And they all, whoever is a perfect living master, will take you to the same destination, but he may change the routing a little bit, depending upon where you are found. Wherever you are found, your background, your status, your understanding, your karma, at that point, will determine how he is going to proceed to help you with his unconditional love and take you back home. So the variation can be in the way we go on the path. Destination of all perfect masters is always the same. What is the duty of hidden Gupta gurus? Who are these hidden masters who come, but they don't tell anybody they are masters, nobody knows them. They prepare, they prepare the seekers for finding a true master who then reveals himself later on. Often at times, often at times, when I feel love during meditation, I feel it in my chest area. How can I feel love and keep my awareness at the eye center? Often time, when I feel love during meditation, I feel it in my chest area. How can I feel love and keep my awareness at the eye center? Love is not a physical phenomenon at all. It's neither connected with the eyes nor with the heart. It's an experience of the soul. It's a pure experience directly of the soul. Not even the mind is involved in it. Not even the sensory systems are involved in it. Not this body is involved in it. Love comes from the soul. And when it comes, it shakes you up all over. It can shake your mind. It can shake your body. And you can feel, have the exp experience of being shaken all over including the chest and the body. But love is not coming from these areas. These are responses of the, of the covers upon you to true love that is coming. Therefore, don't worry where love is coming from. You, if you want to practice meditation, practice at the third eye center. If you want to surrender to the master whose love you are experiencing, forget everything. Don't forget even the third eye center. The desire to go home is so intense that when an experience begins, light, sound, love, the anticipation breaks the experience. How can we progress? The desire to go home is so intense that when an experience begins, light, sound, or love, the anticipation breaks the experience. How can we progress? If in meditation or otherwise, you experience that intense love, forget about the light, Forget about the sound, forget about everything else and think and be drowned and be surrounded and be soaked in that love. You'll make better progress than trying to come back to a physical activity. Dear Guruji, these are a few of my doubts. Please answer. Number one, where does God sit in us? Is it in heart or soul? Two, few people are saying fifth dimension, seven eleventh dimensions, are they really <clears throat> exist? If yes, what is the true purpose of those? Three, how do I realize that I am God? Can I be able to realize in this Gemna lifetime? And four, what is the ultimate truth? How to pursue it? Four questions on one paper. Here are few of my doubts. Please answer. A one, where is God sits in us? Is it in heart or in soul? God sits in the soul. We can't see the soul, so the soul sits in the center of our head, where we are in wakeful human state, and that is where God sits. Two, few people are saying fifth dimensions, seventh, eleventh dimensions, are they really 
exist? If yes, what is the purpose of these? The purpose of these several dimensions, today science realizes at least 11 dimensions they exist right here in the physical world, show that the extent of this creation is way beyond what we can see here, way beyond. These are just scientific discoveries of 11 dimensions. There are far more dimensions than 11. But we can experience slowly these other dimensions. They all exist in an overlap of the physical and the astral plane. If you travel within and leave your body behind, that means you are not aware of the body, and travel with the inner vehicle, you can see several dimensions and how they operate. So these dimensions are merely to expand the awareness of our creation here. It's a much bigger creation than we have known. And you know that every time a better telescope comes, a better microscope comes, our world expands because we can see more. It does not mean that the telescope created the new world. It does not mean the microscope is creating anything new. We are able to experience more. So when you go into deeper meditation and go into higher realms, you can see the truth of these and they are all part of the expanse of this creation. Three, how do I realize that I am God? Am I able to actualize in this germ, in this lifetime? Answer, yes. How do you do it? Right now, you know you exist as a self. You never asked for any proof of that. Everybody knows I exist. Whether you are existing while sleeping, waking, washing, talking, doing any activity, you are doing it and that self exists. You identify that self with your body. You say, I have a body, that's why I'm existing. That's the self. By meditation, you withdraw your attention from this body and you become unaware of it and open up another body and you know, I exist, but not this body. You withdraw your attention from that. And you find out that you still exist, but not in the astral body. No sense perceptions, no physical body, no physical material world, but you exist as the mind alone. Your mind exists without these. Then you discover, I exist, but I have a mind. Then you go with a perfect living master and cross over to the mind. That mind was not you, but another body. And you become a soul. That you are a unit of consciousness that can create anything that consciousness can be capable of. And you say, I exist as a soul. You are helped into going into the true home. Such can you merge with God. Same self that started with the physical body. That became the astral self. That became the causal mental self. That became a soul becomes God. That's how you can become God. The pathway has been made available to us. The entire pathway is within us, not outside. You can only be God and know you are God by following this pathway. Oh, there's one more. Sorry. Fourth question. What is ultimate truth? How to pursue it? Ultimate truth is that there is only one single, undivided, undivisible consciousness, which is our own reality and our own self. That's the ultimate truth. Within that one, the many have been created. Within that many, the first level of illusion is created that the many are real. The many are joined together with the minds as equipment to have a new experience and the mind and soul becomes a unit of the self and we remove further from the ultimate truth. We add on an astral body or a body with sense perceptions and we are further removed from the ultimate truth but we think that is our self. We later on get born as a physical being and we think this is the physical being, this is the self and we get further removed from the ultimate truth. Two weeks ago, I met with a client who revealed to me that while driving experience on the heavens, I asked him to describe the experience. He said he could not. It was indescribable. The spirit asked him, is he ready? He responded, but what about my bills? And the experience ceased. Why did he share this? And even though he was driving, he was protected. Please elaborate. Two weeks ago, I met with a client who revealed to me that while driving, he had a spiritual experience of the heavens opening up for him. I asked him to describe the experience. He said he couldn't. It was indescribable. The spirit tracks him. Is he ready? He resounded 
but what about my bills? And the exercise experience ceased. Why did he share this? And even though driving, he was protected. Please elaborate. I was once driving with a friend of mine in Hawaii, in the outer ring on the Oahu Island. And in the middle of that drive, my friend was driving. I was in the passenger seat. He says, I am having an experience. I said, what experience are you having? I am having an experience that this body is not me. And I can leave hold of the steering wheel. I can just relax and the car will go on by itself. I will just stop the car right now and let me out. <laughs> <laughs> we have these experiences at different levels. We don't apply the rules of another level to this one. We are only allowed by the nature of the experience to be confined to the rules of that experience. The physical life is a physical experience. And we go through this. We can sometimes have an extraordinary spiritual experience or an astral experience which is being described by his friend to him. And then we do not apply that to what is happening physically. We do our physical dharma or physical activities exactly as they're designed to be done. So that is why keep these two separate. The spiritual experiences can come while walking, can come while talking. A friend of mine got a spiritual experience walking with me in Manhattan, in New York, and we are walking on a street. And suddenly he says to me, he sure we are walking way above in the air because we can see the buildings below us. I said, yes, I didn't tell him exactly what was on because he was enjoying that experience. I enjoyed with him. He did look at the buildings. He didn't look that we were walking on the street down below. It was just a momentary small experience of being lifted into the astral form and being unaware of the physical form. And just because he thought we were so much high, he thought the whole body had come up. The body did not go up. The body was following the rules of this physical plane and struck by gravity was walking on the street. But for a moment, or just a very moment, momentary experience, for that he got that experience. Now, you can't combine the two experiences. If he had looked at the body, he would come down immediately. Had he looked down, that we are actually walking there, he would say, yeah, that was just a thought that just came up. But since he did not look at the bodies below, he looked at the buildings above. So he thought that we are really, truly, we've just been lifted up and we're walking. So I didn't tell him that, not to destroy his great experience. If I told him, no, we are really on the ground, he would have felt very bad. So I only said these words, and he still remembers them. I said, my friend, if you are on this path, such kind of miracles will happen with you all the time. How do you balance your needs and wants in life and still be truly happy with your decisions? How do you balance your needs and wants in life and still be truly happy with your decisions? You can never be truly happy with your decisions, period. Because the decisions we make, some may turn out to be good, some may not turn out to be bad. And our mind is so trained, the good will pass quickly, the bad will stay on, so we'll be unhappy. On the other hand, if you don't make any decisions, allow the spirit, allow your soul to go with the flow, to live in God's will, to let circumstances decide what you should be doing. Do that, you'll be always happy. Simple formula. Okay, last question. That was... That was the last question. Is there prashad today? Okay, now we'll have distribution of prashad. And again, I want to remind you, prashad is blessed food. Blessings of some great guy. The greatest guy I know is my master, great master, Hazur Maharaj Baba Sawan Singh. So I invoke his blessings and give you this prashad so that you can take it as blessed food. What is the advantage of this? taking it with you. You can eat a little and remember this event. You can eat a little, remember whose name was invoked. Eat a little and remember what you are supposed to do. Eat this a little bit and remember, oh, you have to meditate today. You forgot. These are all valid uses of prashad. But invalid uses, which are void, are, I am sick. I know prashad is very powerful. I'm not taking my medicine. I'm taking prashad. It won't cure you. 
is meant for another purpose. It does not change the blessing of great master or any master on Prashad does not change its molecular structure or make it a different thing. It's a thing, the association of ideas with that thing has changed. Your association, when you look at it, has changed, will not change. So make good use of it and that will help you to keep on track on the spiritual path. The meeting ends, I'll give Prashad and then there are some people who have asked for personal time, I'll go and meet them in my chamber.